Morning, mate. Morning. How are we doing? Yeah, not too bad. A little bit, um, a little bit better after our last conversation, but still not good. Yeah, rough week. I feel like with what's happened over the last couple of days, you and I have both been like reminiscing over the times last few years. I was thinking about it all of last night. I was like, this whole stack and these people are the reason literally you and I met and the show's taken the direction it's taken and that I've had so much excitement around Bitcoin and the possibilities despite all of the stupid shit I see as I was discussing with Diverter. There's like this one shining light of people who are willing to stand for something that matters. So the more time that passes, the more of a slap in the face it's been. And we recorded our Bitcoin monthly, I think a couple of weeks ago, I think it was on the day of the halving. And so some of the stuff in there is going to be outdated. We know that it was recorded a while ago, most of it's still relevant. But I'm going to leave the other bits in because I don't want to talk about Samurai as if it's a thing of the past, because it's not. It can stay in there, the work that they've done. Yeah, I think it's a worthwhile addition to to the front of the show just to keep people up to date and probably make them think that we're not just arrogant bastards and we don't care about the situation because that couldn't be further from the truth. So yeah, this week um, the DOJ has arrested and indicted the two founders of Samurai Wallet, charging them each with uh, one count of conspiracy to commit money laundering, which I believe carries a 20-year maximum sentence and one count of conspiracy to operate an unlicensed money transmitting business, which again, I believe carries a five-year maximum sentence. I want to be clear that this is only an indictment, as is always the way with law, you are considered innocent until proven guilty. But the fact of the matter is these two people are currently locked up in a cage for operating open source software. To say that this was a tough pill to swallow is a bit of an understatement. As you said, Max, you know, both of us have been very entrenched in the whole ecosystem, huge fans of their work, use their tools every single day, up and down the whole stack. And they were, in my opinion, one of the last bastions or hopes that we had for truly private Bitcoin usage. So right now, as I said, the two founders have been arrested. Uh, 99.9% of the entire Samurai stack has been taken offline. All of the servers have been repossessed. The website's down. Um, Even the GitLab's been taken down. So uh, what does that mean for users? If you're a Samurai Wallet user that is connecting to your own dojo, be that like uh, an umbrella or a running dojo or something similar, you're unaffected. The only thing you need to be cognizant of is having any auto updates for the app from whichever chosen app store you've got it from, make sure you've got those turned off so that there isn't any malicious automatic updates being pushed by anybody who's now in control of those servers. But in terms of how you can transact with the wallet, no change, you know, you've, you've, you've got a sovereign stack and you're running that infrastructure. So well done to you. If you are a default Samurai user and you were previously connected to the default backend, which has obviously been taken down, you will now no longer be able to transact with the wallet. So you're going to need to recover that wallet elsewhere. My advice would be to use Sparrow Wallet on a desktop. And Max, if you can link, there's two links I'm going to give you to put in the show notes, both Freedom Tech articles. Uh, The first one is a heads up about uh, a bit more information about the indictment so you can read the full details. Uh, And the second one is a tutorial on migrating from Samurai uh, into Sparrow so that you can reconstitute access to your Bitcoin and you can, uh, you know, restore access and, and continue transacting. Both, uh, if if you don't want to sift through the, the show notes, just head to freedom.tech and you'll be able to see all of that sort of stuff there. Outside of that, mate, I don't really want to delve into the details too deeply. The bit I just really want to drive home here is that the entire stack that Samurai operated was entirely non-custodial. They never, ever, at any point, no matter which part of their ecosystem you used, had control of your funds. That's the groundbreaking thing here. And that's what is really troubling for me. The fact that they've been indicted on this for conspiracy to commit money laundering and a money transmission business, despite them never, ever controlling your funds. So depending on the outcome of this, once again, we've said similar things with the tornado cash uh, situation. This is a very, very, very dangerous precedent that's being set. 
and is the main reason why you hear me sounding so fucking bearish uh, talking about this right now. Yeah, I also don't want to go into the details. One thing I just wanted to cover there, when you're talking about these auto updates, does that mean anyone who's downloaded the APK doesn't need to do any changes because it's not from any store? Correct, yep. Okay, so if you download from APK, you don't need to worry about that. If you're connected to your own node, you can still continue. And if you want to migrate, then you're suggesting Sparrow. Do you have any concerns, you know, if someone, say, has been using it for their whole stack and they maybe are a bit concerned about putting their seed words into a laptop, is there another option for them, something like importing that into a hardware wallet and then using that as their signing device in Sparrow so they're not going straight into an online hot wallet? Uh, you could, that's absolutely possible. The problem with doing it that way is that if you were a Whirlpool user, there's like three or four accounts there that you're going to need to restore access to, to be able to see like your deposit funds, your bad bank funds, bad bank, your yeah. postmic funds, all that sort of stuff. You're going to need to manually configure those different derivation paths. If you do it with a, a hardware wallet, again, it's possible, but the beauty mm. of just throwing the seed in and entering your passphrase. There's a single button with hot wallets in Sparrow where you just press add Whirlpool account and it'll do all the derivation path stuff for you. I don't think you get that when you're doing hardware wallet stuff. So you, like I say, you'll, you'll need to do that manually. Okay. Basically, that would be the way forward. And if you're really concerned, maybe if you have like most of your stack in pre-mix and you just like mix it as you spend or something like that, then you could consider doing that into a hardware wallet, recovering those funds, and then go to Sparrow once you've recovered and moved those funds, for example. So you're not, if you are exposing your private key into an online device, you're not doing it with everything. Would that be reasonable? Uh, yeah, it seems to make sense to me. Um, just to be okay. clear, like the, the Samurai wallet is a hot wallet anyway. So it's like, you're not necessarily, yes, you're, you're adding the, the, the private key to a, another device, like your laptop, which could be less secure, completely understand the, the concern there. But it's not like mm-hmm. this is a, is a cold, entirely cold storage seed that you're having to bring online. It's not. It's just I remember always Samurai used to always hammer home to me. He was like, the sandboxing on a phone is so much mm-hmm. more secure than Agreed. a laptop. And so that's, I'm just sort of trying to... Yeah, I... I- I believe you can also do it in Blue Wallet, but once again, you're going to have to do manual setting of all of the derivation paths if you were a Whirlpool. Mm. So it's just nowhere near as easy as it is in Sparrow. While we're on the subject of Sparrow and, well, I guess all other Whirlpoints, this does mean that Whirlpool in all of those alternatives is also completely dead for now. So no Whirlpool in Sparrow, no Whirlpool, and that's actually been uh, removed already. So there's a new update of Sparrow that came out yesterday, 1.9. Uh, and that has completely removed the Whirlpool functionality because it was completely broken anyway. Then goes for Bitcoin Keeper, and I think that's it for now. Yeah, so mm. you can't, it's not as a case of changing wallet, and yes, you can carry on Whirlpool. The coordinating server has been repossessed, presumably by the DOJ or the FBI or whoever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, there might be some people, we, we've spoken at length about the decentralized coordination that Samurai was working on and kind of had the the building blocks in place of. There might be some people mm-hmm. thinking, okay, well, you know, what about that? Wasn't that supposed to fix all of this, this type of situation? Unfortunately, we just didn't get to that, the, the, the point of no return where that was ready to go. So that is not functional essentially and Whirlpool is completely down. Okay. I think that pretty much sums the situation up. I don't think we need to go into particularly any more detail. If anyone wants help recovering wallets or whatever, I'll try and do my best. I've, I've helped a couple of people. I'm by no means the expert here, but I'll try and help who I can. And yeah, just to send love and respect to the guys who are affected here. And um, just to reiterate that this is not about number go up and dealing with fucking sailor and bankers and all the other wanky shit this is supposed to be about freedom money and the two people who have done more in my eyes than anybody else to make this a reality despite all the pushback and all the bullshit and 
all the concerns they must have had doing it, they've put themselves out there. They've put their necks on the line to try and bring you all freedom. So I'd like to see some respect out there for these people. Yeah, co-sign that. And just to try and sign off on a lighter note, these guys, you know, if you followed them for even five minutes on Twitter, you know that they're fighters and I'm sure they're going to mount a uh, a big defense against this. There was uh, There has been mutterings of like a communal fund to try and help out the legal defense here no details on that whatsoever but i'm you know rest assured we'll be uh, signposting people towards that so if if this has hit you uh, as hard as it has the rest of the privacy community keep your eye out for that and please do get involved and show your support uh, so that we can uh, help fight this i've spoken to mr crown about a few ideas little things that we can do uh, as well and yeah we'll keep people updated on that and yeah mate advice for for you and other people we spoke about this offline but yesterday just being in a daze and being in such a shit way not being able to think clearly and feeling quite uh down and almost like giving up just getting in the gym and just smashing some heavy weights and getting some of this anger out and reminding yourself you're not going to back down and that there's a fight that needs to be had is a much better feeling than moping and feeling shit Um, and I know that's what they'd want you to do as well so uh, let's get back to fighting yeah agreed onwards all right mate well thanks for jumping on and um, yeah I'll get this thing posted out thanks mate